Hey, me. So I've had a few requests now to talk about KA and networks, and then so I want to dive very specifically into the architecture, um, and then give you overview as to how they work, uh, and then at the end I have a big uh, advancement in addition to the architecture itself. <clears throat> and it's pretty unique overall. Uh, my, my problem with the architecture is, is that it's hard to train. Right? It takes a long time to train each one of these models. And I'll, I'll showcase that and I'll get the, into that for you. Uh, I've developed a method that kind of um, deals with the problems overall with that. And I'll, I'll in it and when I get there. So starting off with what exactly are KNs or Komargorov Arnold networks? They're essentially... Uh, so within your traditional neural network, think of it like a graph, right? Like, like a 100% like a graph. Uh, KNs are not like that. <laughs> and then so with your typical neural network, it's based off of nodes and edges, right? So nodes represent units that perform fixed operations. So they're a dot product plus an activation function. And then edges are the weights from that, and they define how much one node influences another. So they're scalar coefficients in matrix multiplication. You have, you know, like uh, stacking graphs on top of each other. So the structure is like a graph, right? You have input, linear weights, nodes, activation, next layer. And then, so information flow is discrete and it's localized. A, a unit combines inputs linearly and it applies a fixed pointwise nonlinearity. nonlinearity. In this instance, like ReLU, your loss functions, right? Um, and then they're all based off of the standard multilayer per, or perceptron equation, which is this, right? The activation function within the perceptron. Uh, whereas CANs, there's no fixed nodes with activations. So instead of each input dimension gets a learnable univariate function, or they're called splines. And a spline that maps values non-linearly before combination, but all of the values are linear. So a spline is a smooth, flexible function constructed by interpolating between control points or coefficients over a grid. Think of it like a bendable curve that can be shaped. Each spline is a small lookup plus interpolation table. It's a, like a shapeable table that can change shape. What replaces the nodes? The learnable spline function becomes the nonlinear transformation unit. So instead of the activation function, you have a different, a completely different mathematical equation. And then it's all linear. It's so it's it's uh, linear functions that are broken down into smaller units. So instead of a node firing via ReLU, each input passes through a custom learnable curve that morphs shape during training. So the key differences are that you have, like within a traditional neural network, in order to get that nonlinearity, you have fixed activation functions, ReLU, TANH, etc. Whereas with the spline, it's a learnable univariate spline per feature. So it's a bendable shape, right? Uh, and it's not uh, grid-based or like a graph-based as, as a typical neural network would be. So uh, like... Uh, Going through a few examples, you can see that mathematically it breaks down completely and 100% different, right? So this is this very first um, cell that we're looking at here. This is like as as pure as I can build out um, as far as a CAN-based network. Uh, and then if you look at this very, like, if you understand this mathematically on any level whatsoever, it's the interesting thing is it's not using linear algebra. It's using like geometric functions in order to, to piece it together, right? So it, it's uh, an interesting model and interesting architecture overall. So diving into the notebook specifically, this notebook presents a comprehensive implementation and exploration of Komogorov Arnold Networks, a powerful class of neural architectures inspired by the KAN representation theorem, which states that any multivariate continuous function can be decomposed into sums and compositions of univariate functions. So any big function can be broken up into smaller linear functions. And then those linear functions, you apply an activation layer to, or like, like non-linearity layer to them. Uh, and then you combine them together and then you can get, the, like solve a bigger problem. And then it's 100% traceable back. Like that's the big thing within this, right? This is um, explainable AI <laughs> to, to an extreme, right? Like, and, and so like um, corporations like are, are, are big on this, uh, like uh, medical fields, big on these types of architectures because it's 100% explainable, right? Um, so it offers you a different type of architecture via these learnable splines. Uh, and so they create, create univariate transformations offering a flexible and expressive functional learning framework. 
So learning plus ability to understand what exactly the nonlinear functions are doing. <laughs> so can replaces all, like the typical ReLU functions with learnable activation functions implemented via this blind interpolation over a fixed input grid. And you can combine these architectures, which I'll show you down here, right? Like you can add ReLU to it. it, it in my test, it didn't have any, any results, but I'll, show, I'll showcase it to you. So Second thing to understand within this is CAN layers. Each CAN layer models transformations by applying per input univariate spline and activations, followed by a weighted summation. These layers represent a functional decomposition architecture, enabling fine-grained approximation of complex multivariate mappings. Then there are a, a lot of uh, vectorized and optimized CAN variants. So there's like multiple ones, right? And then so this this paper came out um, yet literally yesterday, <laughs> and then it's a new variant on this method, right? So there's like uh, tons of research and, and and still research being applied to it. Bottom line is is that like um, so. Within the applications that you want to use it for, I'm going to showcase within this notebook um, different methods, right? So, but the, like the, I'll show you a classification method, which like the model is going to perform very badly at at classification functions. This is a regression algorithm, plain and simple, right? Uh, we don't want to use it uh, for classification, though we can. It's it's going to get bad accuracy, and, and there's uh, perhaps ways to improve that, right? Like I, I like these uh, models. There's a lot to explore within them uh, overall, and you can do some cool stuff. Stuff within them as I'll show you like at the end like I like you can combine them with some really cool stuff <laughs> and, and then uh, so they're definitely uh, uh, underexplored right uh, it's kind of the, the bottom line for me um, and then so let's dive into this and, and look at like again um, these this network very specifically so in this instance I'm just like creating the the neural network right so like um, it, interesting thing that, that we can build it utilizing tensorflow um, and a lot of like uh, our, our, our torch and a lot of what we um, uh, pull from torch uh it will like uh, some of the the um like uh, libraries will apply for can and building out the can layer um but so uh going through we have our four like it's like in this pure implementation it's just pure for a pass right so like utilizing like a lot more geometric functions and then it's a pure for a pass no activation function and no tan h no relu right like passing all of those and you can see it's, it's all like um lit it's uh, like linear functions that are separated by a uh, like by um uh nonlinear functions in between right but it's all traceable uh, is kind of how it, it uh, the model works in and of itself uh and then so in this instance i i, I then try to like uh train the model on and and um like on on uh actual um like a you know like uh put it through like a training harness um and then our um mean square error in this instance is above two. So like it's not learning um, great <laughs> in this instance, uh, in my first attempt. And then my first attempt is like a very small model, right? So um, 64 by 32 by one layer um, and, and then uh, a grid size of 10. So you're like, you're like, Think of this if, if you're if you're familiar with CNNs, like it's um, built like a CNN in, in, in that type of way, right? Where you have the like the CNN type of dimensions, um, and then so like you, like 128 by 64 by two would be the next like. Uh, uh, like upgrade to this or you know like 256 by 128 by 4 would be the next upgrade by that but then you can also upgrade this the grid size as well so like 5 10 uh, 20 etc right um and then updating the, the grid size will uh, upgrade performance like it's it's you know like you're updating the space for the model but uh and then you can vectorize the this space overall too right so you can choose to vectorize it or not mm -hmm. and, and then but the uh cool and and, and um but the thing with this is that, like these models, it takes a long time to go through <laughs> these training functions compared to a normal model, like like uh, or like a um, a CNN model will blaze through this a lot faster. Um, and then the bottom line within that is that if you once you if you understand and you're looking through this, like none of this has um, parallelization built into it, right? So then the next step I try to do is so like um, let me try to like make it for a classification task, like like for what you would typically use like a CNN for. Um, and then let me like put some of those like um, uh, like let's put some like regularization to it, like some aspects that we would within a, a neural network, right? That's kind of what I start playing around with it. So I add like a sig, I, I add sigmoid functions, and I add like 
um, TAN H, like different things that you would um, within like a typical neural network. And then I want to see like uh, like again more adding the sigmoid. Um, and then so just seeing like like what will happen within that, right? Um, and then mean squared error actually goes up. <laughs> like uh, my goal, like this train, this model trains a lot faster, like like a ton faster. Um, but it's uh, like the the it's worthless <laughs> like it's, it's like higher as far as the error right uh, and then so I go through and I, I try to like um, fix that out like I, I give it like uh, three layers as opposed to like one and then I go through I like uh, I test it on an actual data set the iris data set I test it in this instance for classification right um, uh, like typical CNN task uh, and then the, the loss is good like it picks up on it like it's learning from it like um, and, and and so like th this is is, I mean, to me, like super good what it ends up with, but the test accuracy ends up super bad. Like, so I mean, I'd be curious to know, like, I should have run through because there's a possibility that it, it is scoring very high here. It's just that because, like, it, it up here was bad. So that is a possibility, right? But the, the confusion matrix, uh, you can see, like, it's getting a lot wrong on, on the confusion matrix, but it, like, it does start to classify some right. So there is a chance that, like, these models could be good or utilized for, um, like um, CN, like typical CNN type tasks because they, they are built like CNN models, but it, like you would tr want to train it for a lot more epochs. Um, and like um, they, again, they take they take forever <laughs> to to, to uh, train, right? And then so in this instance, I add more epochs, like fifty epochs. This took like. 31 minutes to run or like oh like this one I think was over an hour right uh, and then you could like the loss gets to incredibly low numbers so uh, like it is learnable um, and then it does like this it, it predicts some of these with like a hundred percent it starts to get good on the accuracy but again test accuracy comes out at 43.3 so like <clears throat> even with more epochs it's not it, it's getting the same exact result on the test accuracy so there's a, I mean it could be a possibility that I'm measuring something wrong within this because like looking at these like this this these numbers are are good overall right like this is to me is better than uh, like this should be coming out better than 50 percent accuracy in the end although you have the yeah like uh, well no like no <laughs> uh, so i get you know like it, it, it does make a, a bit of sense within here as to like um how it's how it's guessing out but like so bottom line like the model's not meant to be a um a, a classification uh, model overall. What it's meant for is for regression tasks, right? So then that's what I, I train it for in this particular instance. Uh, and then I build it out um, for like um, regression uh, instead. Um, and then I try to like uh, uh, make it like pretty pure in, in this instance, but I do like, so like, uh, yeah, this one, it's just still for propagation and, and everything that you would see there. Uh, and then we get like, this is the end result um, as to what we get on regression tasks. And then again, like it, it's so, it, these loss rates are, are good <laughs> overall. Um, and then, but you can see when it comes to regression and then pr kind of like predicting along this line, it does a lot better. Um, and then, so these are what the models are designed to do. And then this one, so this one took thir like, uh, as you see here, 31 minutes, right? Uh, 31 minutes to, to run this. And then like, which is the, the huge problem with these models overall. And that was like my problem with testing them. Uh, like, uh, and then if you look through again, the, the problem is, is that they don't utilize parallelization on, on any level but i like the the linearity aspect of it right so then my engineer mind uh what i do is like okay let me make it a swarm algorithm because like i can do everything that it's doing within this logic and i can just give it to swarm agents and then so like it's breaking down the problem like let's say we have a problem and then we like our problem represents like one big block unit right we then we take our problem and we break it down into instead of one big block it's 100 small blocks and then if we solve the 100 small blocks then they'll equal out to the one big block which is perfect for swarm algorithm to me in my mind right and then we get access to parallelization so that's kind of just how exactly i build this out right so these these swarm agents they activate and they operate uh off of like their their like swarm swarm can right <laughs> it's kind of the the layer that i build out here um and then i i connect them so they're they're operating off of can mechanics and like can logic but uh blazingly fast right so that 41 seconds compared to 31 minutes uh 
and then I train for the same amount of epochs, uh, and then we get like the, the same result, right? <laughs> like, so here's my result in 41 seconds compared to a traditional tan mo a can model, uh, which is 31 minutes. And then so there's ends at, let's see, so the last two are four, uh, 0.41 and 0.35, and then I get, um, 0.51 and 0.45 at the end of mine at 50 and then there's uh, but so this is also to training for 100 epochs so for looking at here uh, the better comparison would be 0.66 compared to 0.57 uh, and then so yeah like I'm, I'm beating out that at these metrics right if I had extended this out for 100 epochs um, in this instance the loss rate would be significantly lower as we can see uh, here in this instance but so we're, we're getting like um, uh, 100x speed up, so 41 minute, 41 seconds compared to 31 minutes, uh, and then we're getting like uh, dramatic, like same results or or better uh, as far as the accuracy when we're comparing like, epoch for epoch. So uh, pretty cool in that instance overall, uh, highlighting and showcasing that you can build this out as a swarm algorithm, which makes it a lot better for your testing. So if you are interested in KAN networks, uh, build out and like feel free to utilize my swarm architecture here, and then. Base them off of swarms because it's, it's going to like make it dramatically better for you <laughs> and, and faster. Uh, and then uh, if you want to build out then a pure network from there, uh, then go ahead, but train it and like and, and test it via like swarm algorithms. Because again, like the, the my knock on this just like through my architecture, like my engineer mind as I'm running through and then waiting for all these tests to go through is like, man, I wish there was parallel processing within this. Like the one thing that is missing within this is parallel processing. Um, and then so uh, that's exactly what swarm algorithms do very well, like above anything else, right? So it just made intuitive sense to me uh, and it ended up working beautifully. Like my tests are really good on it, really nice. So it, it seems to be a really cool addition. Uh, if you like this type of content overall, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.